Hello, friends, and welcome back. It's great to have you with us. It is Thursday, so happy Thursday to you. Thank you so much for joining us. And as you know, this is like, I guess, part two of this week's In the Loop with Greg and I. I'm excited to be here back with you. I'm going to keep you posted on all things business, finance. I actually have some pretty fun updates. I'm actually excited because I actually have positive and fun financial news for you. I think we just kind of keep with the correlation that's been a great day in the financial markets and big welcome to In the Loop with Winnie and Greg. For those of you who are new to the show, I'm Winnie Sun, longtime financial pro, CNBC council member and Forbes contributor and host of Level Up, which can also be found on NASDAQ, Amazon Fire to name a few. And of course, we are here live and I'm so excited to be back. Wow, Greg, two days in a row I get to be with you here. That's I think this is a what a in the loop first time that we've been two days in a row. Has it been? I'm pretty sure, as far as I can remember. Yeah, I think this is this is a first. So uh it is, it's great to be back here and and talking to everybody and just joining everyone live here. You know, we have a lot of fun things to talk about. I already like the fact that when he said there's good financial news today, so that's <laughs> that's a bonus right out of the gate. And we've got some fun stuff to talk about in tech too. So there was the big Microsoft event yesterday. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about meta and VR and where all that is going. And I got one other thing at the end that we'll discuss too, but you know, we're live here and we can take your questions, your comments as we go through. It's so good to see everybody. For those who don't know, I'm Greg Nibbler, longtime tech journalist, tech reporter, uh, covering all kinds of different things, but usually I like the fun stuff. So we're not going to get too heavy into, into anything that's that's boring, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about what's in the news and what's happening and get your opinion. So really would like to see that, your questions, your comments. Like I said, drop those in as we go through. So uh, that'll be coming up in a minute, though. But Winnie, I want to hear about what this, uh, this good news is. I know you deserve some good news, Greg, and I, I'm excited <laughs> because, you know, everything's working great today. Tech is, yeah, your tech is doing wonderful. We can hear you <laughs> nice and clear. Knock on wood somewhere. Knock on there. something. Yeah. And I see uh, Joshua cross X Fighter joining us from YouTube live. And I know, Joshua, you had shared on Twitter that you love raising positive good news. And we have a lot of that for you today. Vicky Garvey joining us from Facebook Live. Sadiq is joining from YouTube Live. Lots of lots of friends today I see on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Facebook. You know, as you know, we stream, I think, on 12 different social media platforms, maybe even more. So wherever you are joining us from, say hello. Let us know how you're doing. And of course, if you have any questions when Greg and I kind of break down some of our topics, feel free to jump in because we'd love to hear from you. We might actually share your comments on the show, too, which makes it really, really fun. All right. So here's what I'm going to say. Yesterday, as you remember, yesterday was kind of a weird day in the financial markets. It was like kind of down, kind of up, and then it kind of ended like triple negative day, but it was just like eh, a little bit negative, not like great. But today, my friends, what's a big update. In fact, for those of you who are connected with me on Twitter, you may have seen I actually posted about this. Some days we go low, some days we go high. Well, today we certainly went high. The Dow went up, uh, closed up 827 points. NASDAQ up 232 big ones and S&P 500 also up 92 points, which is very, very fascinating because I would have expected today to have a greater plunge and not such a huge positive rally day because earlier today, the Fed actually delivered, um, and we know that the Fed's going to be delivering uh, some bad news once again in November. There's going to be probably another big Fed hike, but actually, we actually got information, more inflation data. And so, as you know, the consumer price growth now has risen to a 40-year high. This is as of last month. Well, because of that, the market actually, uh, the producer price index came out, some of that data came out, which is showing that people are still buying, they're still consuming goods at a very high level. The price of goods continue to be very, very high. We saw that with wholesale prices. Well, the market actually dropped when the news first came up, but then all of a sudden people, I guess, thought about it and felt like, well, if it's dropping this much, maybe I should do some, you know, discount shopping, um, bottom fishing, however you like to call it. And I guess a lot of investors and traders jumped back into the market. And so you see all these big positive numbers today. So really, really interesting day. Now, talking about things that rose today, though, one thing that if you if you didn't pay attention, if you're looking to purchase a home, I wish I had better news, this number is probably going to get even bigger. And this is that mortgage rates have yet once again hit another 20 year high. So if you're looking to purchase a new home or you're looking to refinance, this is, of course, not very good news. 
but at least you know, right? 20 year high now, mortgage 30 year fix is close to 7%. This happened just this week as well. It's at 6.92%. So really, really high. But another thing that went high, and this is on the positive, is Social Security. Now, millions of Americans we know are on Social Security. Social Security just got another huge big boost on its cost of living adjustment for 2023. And what that means is this is actually the biggest cost of living adjustment in over 40 years, in about 40 years. And what this means is starting in January, the average recipient of Social Security is going to be receiving about an extra $140 per month um, on their Social Security that was, you know, that was adjusted for inflation. So this is a big thing. For those of you who are on Social Security or you have loved ones, maybe grandma, grandpa on Social Security, this is definitely good news because we know that a lot of our seniors worry about how they're going to keep up with expenses with everything going up in costs. Okay. Now, talking about all things positive, we're going in that direction now. This is a fun one. Now, Delta uh, reported earnings uh, and they're saying that earnings look really solid because people are getting more optimistic. People are going traveling more. We know Greg just got back from a, a big trip as well. People are flying. People are staying at hotels. Let me tell you, I just got back from amazing, actually two separate hotel stays. And yeah, absolutely. The hotels were very, very busy. Restaurants were busy. It was a really fun trip. But on top of that, even if you're not flying, you might be wondering how you can earn more miles. And I really want to talk about this because this is something I'm really passionate about. I mean, what does a financial person do as their hobby? Well, they're really good at points and miles when it comes to travel because we're good at numbers. And this is something that all of you can do. So let's say, for example, you want to be earning points and miles when you shop and when you do you, you, you do your daily thing. Well, you know about credit cards, you know about like booking flights and earning miles and like that. But now Delta just announced a partnership with Starbucks. So starting this week, now you can actually earn one mile for every $1 that you're spending at Starbucks. You gotta make sure now, you have to make sure you connect your two accounts. So you wanna go to your Starbucks Rewards account and of course your Delta Sky Miles, make sure you have one of those. And there's a special website, you can set up this connection. So every time you purchase, you can actually earn miles. And for what they're doing, this is like the fun um, promotion, if you will, to promote this new partnership. Between now and the end of the year, December 31st, you can actually earn an additional 500 Delta Sky Miles once you join and you make one purchase. Now you're gonna, you know, you'll accrue also 150 stars, which is enough, I guess, for a free coffee. I don't know. I don't really go to Starbucks much, so I don't really know this stuff. But I thought it was really exciting because for a lot of people, you know, we're just look, looking to make like extra miles and whatnot, making sure that you continue to have these so that you can travel ideally with less money out of your wallet and using points and miles to travel instead. This is kind of one of the things that I loved early on, Greg, was that this was a few years ago that Hyatt and American Airlines created a partnership. So for example, I just stayed at the Hyatt in Carmel Valley Ranch. Then I was able to also earn miles on American and hotel points at the same time. So it's kind of, I always feel like it's kind of a magical double dip for those of you who are travelers. Yeah, that is great. Any kind of tips like that, I love that. I mean, if you can get miles and however you accrue them, I don't go to Starbucks very much either, but I mean, just any kind of extra opportunity to, to add those on, especially like you said, you know, with things, costing a lot if you can get a free plane trip you know just from doing things that you're already doing i think that's a that's a that's a pretty great option so that's all pretty of, awesome mm -hmm. yeah pretty awesome so all <laughs> of those are those are great great deals amazing amazing well greg i want to hear about this i want to hear about microsoft because i know yesterday you're going to share it but i also know you probably got a lot of questions i know i asked the question um what do you have to share with us today yeah, well, let's let's talk about. It. We'll kind of walk through what uh, what some of the announcements were, and I've got a couple of different things here that we're going to cover. But if you have questions too while we're uh, live, feel free to drop those in, and if I can't answer them, I'll tell you where to go. Uh, so Microsoft had their service event. You know, this is like the I don't know how many different hardware events we've had over just the last two months. It seems like every week, and it really is that we've had a different one. Uh, so this was Microsoft's big turn at that. And Surface is their line of laptops, of, of basically their line of computers, pretty much everything that they've got. And we've been waiting to see what they were gonna come out with and was expected to get the first one here, which is the Surface Pro 9. So the ninth version of this. 
I had a Surface Pro 6 for a long time. Um, I was pretty happy with it, actually. It's, it's a pretty great computer. It's one where you can both use it as a tablet. You can attach a keyboard on it. You can do a lot of different things with it. It's very um, you know, utilitarian. You can use it for a lot of stuff. And that's what we got to see was the newest version of that. Now, looks-wise, if you're a fan of these laptops, not a huge difference there in, in the appearance. And uh, still, you know, as always with the ports, you always want more ports, but you get two. So that, that's what you end up with on this. Um, but, uh, but overall, you know, a good laptop. And as it's saying right there, you know, now with 5G. So they've got a 5G option, uh, 19 hours of battery life on that. So if you are traveling, as we were mentioning, you know, you want to travel and work, 19 hours is a pretty good, pretty good lifespan on a battery, I, I feel like, for, um, for something like that, for something that's that. Uh, powerful. So that was the kind of the big headline. You also had a couple of other things though, that came out here. And so we have the Surface Tablet 5, or which is, or excuse me, the Surface Laptop 5. So that's the, the laptop in the line of things as well. So a fifth version of that, if you're a fan of, of that side of things. But the big kind of wow thing is something that they've had before that now we got to see a newer version of. And that is the Surface Studio 2 Plus, not a Surface Studio 3, but Surface Studio 2 Plus. And that's what we got to see um, coming out here. So this is this is the really big workhorse, powerful machine. I got to play around with the original Surface Studio. Um, just that, even, even that lever right there is really amazing, just how many different ways you can balance this thing. But this is designed for creatives. This is designed for graphic designers, for people who are doing animation, for any kind of aspect like that because it works with the, the Surface Pen. So you've got that kind of aspect on there, but you can really do so much with this thing. It's, it's pretty amazing the kind of graphics you have. You know, it's a 4K everything. It's 28 inches. Um, you, everything that you use there with your Surface Pen, you know, your stylus works well on it. A little bit of disappointment uh, with some of the, um, they're still using kind of an older uh, uh, GPU. So that's, that's it for people who wanted something, you know, really updated. Maybe that's why it's a two plus and not a three. So you just got kind of a partial update on there. But this is a really awesome machine. Um, I got to say for, for using it. However, it's going to be a little pricey. So this thing costs actually, Winnie, I don't know if you have you seen how much it costs or maybe we just showed it and I, I missed it when you were well, saying you it. Just oh, showed yeah, there it is right, right there. So <laughs> it's right there. Uh, yeah. 500 big ones. Yeah. Yeah, that's hotel tax even. I mean, that's I guess that's that's the price it would be in your neighborhood, Greg. <laughs> right? Yeah, I guess yeah. For me, it would be uh, no sales tax. But I'd be like, Greg, can you uh, help me order? <laughs> oh, I've uh, I don't legally speaking, I've never done that for a friend never, of never. Before. Greg doesn't do that. Never at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it, this is a it's an impressive machine. But yeah, that price that price point is just so high. So you it really is targeting. And this is a lot of what we're going to be talking about today, too, is targeting pros, targeting kind of that enterprise solution or, or people where this is your career or maybe a business that needs one of these. That's probably who's going to be getting that service, that service studio. Um, wow. But still, that you know, some, some good announcements coming out from them. So that was the hardware side of things. Is, do you have any questions on the hardware stuff? I don't have questions, but I, I just think it kind of looks like an iMac, but a touchscreen looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, certainly there's, you can have the arguments on, on which one you would use. Uh, I like it. Let's see. Good idea. But the animators and graphic guys use Wacom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that that's true. Um, you know, you can tie that in, I believe actually to this, but, but yeah, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Ricky needs a loan now, Greg. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to really be, be using it to make it worth worthwhile for that part for $4,500. Uh, okay. So that was that side of things, but let's talk about a couple of the other things. So this is something that I think you might find interesting. Now, if you watch this show, you know, uh, Winnie uses mostly, uh, mostly Apple products, Mac products, and I'm kind of more on the windows and Android side of things. There it is. Yeah, I got my, got my ga galaxy, uh, a plus right there. So, um, so this is kind of part of it is part of what's going on here is uh, Apple and Mac or excuse me, Apple and uh, Microsoft are kind of teaming up a little bit more lately. What? And it's kind of weird, right? It's like, you know, the, the complete opposite ends here, They're kind of working together. And the reason is this. So there's some new integrations that are going to be happening. Apple TV and um, iTunes are going to be Apple Music is going to be available now 
on Windows devices and on Xbox, whereas previously that really wasn't something that was happening. It's it's very there. You know, Apple likes to keep their things on their on their side of it. And this team up is pretty big. And so iCloud also coming to Microsoft platforms. So if you have things uh, in there with uh, with iCloud, you know, it's going to make it a lot easier. And that's always one of the hardest things for anybody to use. You either have, really have to be in one of the ecosystems or not. And especially when it comes to Apple, they don't like to share their their toys. But this is something that, you know, we're going to be able to, to see a little bit more of a, of a team up on there. So that, I think, is a good sign for at least all of us, for consumers. So if you have an iPhone and all your stuff's in iCloud, well, now you don't have to worry as much. It's going to be able to, to work much easier with Windows and into all of their platforms. So I think it's good. I think it's good everybody's yeah. coming together. This is a really – Greg, I feel like this is a big, big deal. It's yeah. like literally like it's almost like the two crazy step siblings are getting along finally. Right. This could be the beginning of oh, – I message for – I mean, this hopefully, right? Uh, Sadiq, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, because Sadiq said Windows is a clone of Apple OS. So I feel like it would. I think it's in Microsoft's best interest to play well with Apple. I'm not sure if Apple really needs to play with Microsoft, but I don't know what you think. I mean, I think you could go either way on that, but I mean, with the Windows side of things, it's much more third party friendly, as far as as far as that. So I think that you know, it it's they're more open to it than mm. Apple usually is. Apple Apple doesn't like to share too much. So <laughs> <Bad> <laughs> they, once you're in, they want you in. They don't want you trying out <laughs> stuff from other people. Uh, but uh, I feel like Windows users are a little bit more open to trying out Apple products because there's a lot of people that use iPhones but are still Windows users. So mm. I think this is going to be good. I, I, any kind of integration I feel like is good. It's good for all, everybody in the end to be able to do that, to try out different things. So um, might not yeah. be good for Apple. I feel like they don't really have a need to do this because I feel like PC users and Android users are kind of the same, right? And then, but once you have an iPhone and you see the integration with the like, iPad and the, you know, the MacBooks, it just, it's hard to break that. And then would, would Apple benefit from this? I don't know if Apple would benefit from it. I mean, I yeah. think they would for a few different ways as far as, I mean, there are benefits to a Windows machine. In, in some aspects over over a, a Mac, but, mm -hmm. um, and there's also people who are just used to it. Yeah. just aren't gonna switch. So if their iPhone is now gonna integrate stress. with that a lot better, then that's better mm -hmm. for the iPhone user who is mm -hmm. still on a Windows PC. True. Or maybe, you know, they, they don't use a laptop enough to warrant purchasing something that's, you know, maybe a very expensive Apple laptop. This would be a way. I think it's good. I think it's good. Um, but yeah, Apple can also still force you to just buy your app, the Apple products. They could they could yeah. do that. So uh, they so said cause because Apple is a closed ecosystem. It is. And yeah. um yeah, and uh, Vicky yeah. is saying Apple and Microsoft AI technology together. Yeah, I mean, you know, at least it, at least they're playing nice a little bit, playing nice together just a, just a bit. I don't think it's gonna go too far. I don't think we're gonna see a whole lot more of this, but <laughs> you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe it'll happen. Uh, so let's see. So we've got that. And I'm, I'm sorry, when I look down here, I'm just going through my list because there's so much stuff that, that was going on here. Uh, here's something else that I thought was kind of cool that they brought out, and that was Microsoft Designer. And this is following that trend of using AI art. Now, I don't know if you have any, any friends that have been doing this. I've got a few friends who are constantly in, uh, especially their graphic designers or video creatives that are, that are creating AI art, which is where you go. Uh, there's one called Dolly. So that's one of the kind of the big ones that's out there. And this is integrating that kind of technology into something that makes it a lot easier for people to use. And again, focusing on designers or creative types, uh, mm -hmm. graphic artists, that kind of thing. And they're going to make it a lot easier to create this AI art and add that into everything. So Dolly, Dolly 2, that's the second version. There's some really interesting AI artwork out there. Uh, but this would actually help you out for, say, you could just describe something you know, for say you need a, need some uh, artwork for something that you're doing. Boom. You can describe it and you can get something instantly created right there just by that. Wow. That's yeah. incredible. Now, regular graphic designers, I guess that, that would be a good question. Is this something you're happy about or not? Because that could be an issue possibly, uh, but it sure does make things a lot easier and they're integrating it into 
into the Windows products. So it's going to be a lot easier for you to use it. Especially for those of us who are not graphic designers. I mean, talk yeah, about time savers. Exactly. It's kind of like, like the, this is like the next level of Canva or some of the Adobe tools, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think we're going to see a lot more. I mean, it's really big right now. AI artwork. And I think you're going to see it integrated into a lot more things. This is just a sign of the times. So yeah, I'm sure Adobe is going to have some more, more things I would guess that work in with that. And pretty much every platform is going to have to figure out how to put it in. There's still some issues with like figuring out, you know, rights and all that stuff. But um, yeah, this is one thing that Microsoft's going to be doing. So, so another cool. thing that you can add in there. Yeah. Vicky is saying so cool too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's pretty fun. Just type in anything you want randomly and it'll you can get some weird stuff out of out of these these AI platforms, depending on what you tip, type in for your for your <laughs> keywords. Uh, so so that's one more thing. So that's that's added in there. And then there, there's a few other things that Microsoft talked about, but I mean those are kind of the big highlights, at least as far as what I thought um, that uh, that we can see. So overall, I mean I think it was a good day, a good announcement, good uh, good good event for Microsoft with all of that service cool. stuff. Um, all right, want to talk about meta let's talk about because meta also had meta aka facebook um, also had an event as well and their event was focusing well a lot around the metaverse and how much they are inv investing in making that a thing and where how that's going and where it's at but one shift they are doing and this also does bring in microsoft as well uh they they're really making a push for more of like a corporate like enterprise use case of of a virtual reality of the metaverse and they're they're talking about you know meetings in there but also workflow in there and uh, really integrating that into more of kind of our normal workflow that we would have at an office so instead of say like a zoom meeting they actually are going to be working with zoom zoom is going to be available on there you could bring that in they're working with microsoft so where you could have a teams meeting in in the vr space so you could have all kinds of different things going at the same time and really the idea is just a different way of working a diff and that's that was one of the themes they were going for and to do that they have a brand new headset that's going to be part of this so it's the quest pro that's going to be coming out and the quest pro is um is their brand new one it's pretty sleek looking they put the battery in the back of it. So the battery is actually around the back of your head. So it gives it a little bit more of an ergonomic flow right there. Uh, this is not going to be a cheap headset, though. This is something that's really, like I said, they're targeting kind of more that that workspace use for it. Uh, I believe it starts at, yeah, $1,500. $1, so I, maybe that's a set price. I don't know if there's any add-ons. I'm sure you could probably do. But yeah, for 50, so $1,500 is... That's a big entry point. If you're just used to going into VR, maybe watching a movie or playing a few games, I, I feel like that's kind of a steep price, but that's not really what they're going for. They want they want workspaces to be using this. They want um, you know really big artists to be using it. And that's kind of what they're showcasing here, different ways you could do it. This demo is kind of interesting, having people from all over the place you know, join in on that and be able to work together in that platform. This is, this is what they want. This is the way they envision this um i'm curious when what do you what do you think about this like do you think that this is something you would use to interact like say with your clients um i mean <laughs> I think that answers it right there <laughs> i mean i guess if my clients would want this experience but i i mean i think it's really cool uh -huh. And it's interesting because if you're talking enterprise and typically that would be something we would be actually that market for our, our, the financial arm of our business. Yeah. Would for sure be a target for this. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess, but it needs two people, right? I mean, it's not just a, like if I had it and you didn't have it, like it'd, it'd be weird, right? How would we? Well, there's, there's ways that you can actually join in without having one of the headsets. Even if somebody else has it and you can, you can kind of view it. Mm -hmm. um so you can have bring other people in in other ways uh, but yeah what are the advantages of it i mean to really take advantage of it i think everybody would probably really need one yeah uh, although you could show demonstrations and move things around especially if you're building something and everybody would be able to get a better look at it as you can manipulate things in that in that virtual space 
Mm -hmm. I think that part is, is pretty cool. I've seen some demonstrations at CES before of something like this, and this was even a more primitive version, but uh, some automakers who are working on designing a new vehicle. And they could mm -hmm. be in Detroit or LA or you know, Berlin or something, and they could all join in and look at every single aspect of the vehicle. So that was kind of the demonstration. You could zoom in, you know, down to see a screw that where that goes, and you could all actually, you know, see a 3D rendering of it in real time and manipulate it with your hands. Like that kind of stuff, I think, is a good use case for it. Mm -hmm. A financial meeting? I don't know. I don't know what you. <laughs> I guess you know you could show the yeah. numbers moving around. I, I'm you not show sure. numbers. You can move. Like you could move, yeah. You, I mean, we could do it, but I don't think it's a necessary thing. This yeah. is probably one thing I'd rather keep that money invested in something else. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's cool. I think, like you said, it's a very specific niche at this point, right? I don't yeah. think it's mainstream yet. But like, I mean, I mean, okay, I'll say this. You know, I just took my kids to the orthodontist. Uh, yesterday and i think that would be cool that'd be a cool thing where like you could see you know the dentist working in the teeth and, and oh. All <laughs> oh no i don't want to see that <laughs> I, mean, I mean not you but like maybe like the parent or yeah. somebody you know i'm I, maybe not and then see that's the thing is then then it's a very limited population because let's be honest right as a lot of these enterprise um, whether it be software or systems or tools or hardware requires a lot of costs. And so yeah. if it's very specific to those industries, I think you're missing out if it, it can't be used for more service business as well as like manufacturing businesses, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like a lot of this is they're trying to figure out, they're just kind of taking stabs at everything and seeing where it's going to land and when this interest is going to come because they're investing billions of dollars into it. Um, but I think you're right. I think the general public just isn't there yet. I mm -hmm. have seen some demonstrations that are really cool. Uh, at, uh, actually, when I was at um, IBC in Amsterdam, um, part mm -hmm. of the Microsoft demonstration used the HoloLens, which is their augmented reality headset. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a really like AR augmented reality. I feel like there's a lot more, it's a lot more tangible for people Mm. To, to once you try it to understand it the demonstration there was it was like there's a basketball game that was going on and then you would be able to like move things around um like it, it you could stop the play and then actually move players around and then replay it and and it could render it as though they did this instead it was pretty pretty high power like cool stuff mm -hmm. um but yeah, I think that's I think that's going to be the bigger thing for me is is augmented reality. I think that's going to be where it's overlaying stuff over your real world, cool. and you know, like the manufacturing side of things. There's there's a lot we could go down with that and and go down that road. But this is what uh, what they're talking about. So this is this is where Meta is Meta is going. Whether your office is going to be getting one of those or not, anybody out there? Yeah. You know, let me let me know. And maybe this is something that people could really find very beneficial. Um, but or maybe they're just going to build it and then hope hope that yeah. it comes along you know hope yeah this will be cool this kind of technology would be great right greg especially now like I, i'm thinking like this is like the future of like remote work and remote like education yeah. and like like in the medical center like, so many yeah like like maybe it'll maybe these sort of tools will enable us to really truly be agnostic of location where we could just be anywhere and collaborate if enough people have this then you wouldn't even know if we we're joining us from i don't know wherever yeah. right yeah uh yeah i mean really you could i saw sadiq mention um something that there was a lot that he wrote there but uh microsoft is teaming up also with meta so if i think i forgot to bring that up so you're gonna be able to work on microsoft products within that if you want to or just put it on a big screen also xbox uh streaming is going to go into the metaverse so cool even you know i mean that that's might be kind of cool because you could have a gigantic huge screen you know within your with your goggles that you're looking at so the cross x spider will like that huh <laughs> yeah that that part i mean all this seems fun to me i i like all of that uh whether it's i need it uh, you know i don't know i don't know if i don't know if we need it yet and i think that's kind of where we're at yeah i think i'm with you i think that the, the, there's not enough need yet yeah it's a lot of fun though. So Meta, if you want to send me one of those, I will be happy to test that out. I will admit it, just send one for everybody. <laughs> yeah, come on, that's a round of Quest Pros, please. Everybody on in the loop community, one for Viggy, one for Sydney. <laughs> yeah, it's like Oprah. Right? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> so so that was what's going on there. So kind of some really some big picture discussions that are happening with Meta and, and the metaverse and where it's going. And we can get into some more specific stuff an, another time. The last thing I wanted to bring up, though, and this was something that just came out today, and it has to do with a Google uh, a Google thing that they were working on. I'm sure I probably talked about it on here before, but it seemed like one of those texts that's like, okay, is this just a, a concept and is it going to go anywhere? But it does seem like it's going somewhere and it follows the same vein. So it's called Google Project Starliner. And uh, the name's a little misleading, or Starline, excuse me. Name's a little misleading because it really doesn't have anything to do with space. But it has to do with meeting with other people, but getting an actual 3D holographic basically version of them that you sit down with so this is kind of like some star trek star wars level stuff to where you would be able to uh have somebody else would have to have the same thing but you have a bunch of cameras that would render around you and then make it appear as though you're 3d as you're sitting across from them so google's been testing this out with a bunch of other um a bunch of internal companies like meetings and onboarding meetings they said that they would do but now this is going to be coming out to where you're going to be able to do it for some other businesses so some partner businesses are going to start incorporating this into their offices to see if people are really into it and i think that means that the testing's gone pretty well so far so if you look right there you know it looks like they're sitting right across from someone that's how well that rendering is that's a screen that's a screen that they're looking at and so the other person is not in that same room but it looks like they're sitting right there. So it brings a little bit more realism to, you know, some of those some of those remote meetings. And I think that's a little bit more tangible than the metaverse to be honest. Uh, you you do have to have the the full, uh, you know, equipment, but the, how that tech works is pretty cool. Like real time yeah, real time compression, real time 3D rendering of someone and having that come back and not feel stilted or or weird or out of place. Like that's pretty cool. We right. need that, Greg. We yeah. need that for like, you know, when we do our like meetings, preparing for the show, we could just say, yeah, that yep. would, you'd be, you know, have something to drink, eat lunch. We could just say, that yeah. would be so cool. Basically sit down in front of the magic mirror and have it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the, the three, I mean, the rendering capabilities are just really cool. Yeah. Really that's cool awesome. This. But the fact that they're sending it out to some other businesses, so I believe it was like T-Mobile and, um, uh, yeah, some Hackensack Meridian Health, Salesforce, WeWork. So a bunch of different uh, companies that they partner with are going to start incorporating this into their businesses, which means more and more people are going to be trying it out. So that, you know, uh, maybe for bigger it. companies, that could be something that you could actually be seeing used. This I can absolutely see being used. In fact, I would actually consider getting one of that for our company, right? Yeah. Because like you said, different locations could have that. Like we have our back office support is in multiple states. Some I have clients in different countries. This yeah. would be super cool. Not only that, if you've been following the news, you'll be seeing that you probably heard with there's been all sorts of really weird, you know, reasons like people can't travel because of like, you know, tr you know, some countries are shut and some com don't they don't let you travel. Then there's like yeah. health issues to be concerned about. There's, you know, family. And I mean, talk about a way to really bring back that in-person experience and yeah. putting it in front of you, I think taking us away from the typical laptop or monitor and making it feel real, that's what's necessary to truly um, make this work, I think, on a virtual basis. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty, pretty cool. So, um, you know, again, just kind of changing that. And I feel like over this last couple of years, you know, with everything that's gone on, this has really mm -hmm. pushed this technology further and people are more willing to try this Definitely. stuff out. And, and yeah, I think uh, I think it's it's pretty interesting. So that's uh, that's kind of what I have for this week. But yeah, talking about that stuff and just how it's all changing. Uh, there's so much happening right now. Like everything's changing so fast. But I love the fact that all of this is being tested. Who knows if all of it will work out. But you know, why not try it out? See what happens. So that's, uh, that's, that's kind of my motto is with other people's money in tech. So, you know, <laughs> if it failed, I like it's not how on you me. Put the other so, people money in there. You know, Microsoft and Facebook and, you know, they, Google, they can spend the money on that. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then we just get to see if it, if it works. 
this is really cool. I like that. I, I'm, yeah. And it'll be interesting to see how this unfolds. And for those of you who are joining us, if you have any questions for Greg on anything that he discussed today, of course, you know, feel free to send him a message or put yeah. in comments here because, and most importantly, let me ask you this. I mean, we have a lot of viewers from all different platforms. If let's say hypothetically, Greg or myself were in front of these monitors and you had one of these locations close to you, like Greg mentioned that we work, right? If there wasn't a, in a neighborhood we work, would you be interested in scheduling a session so that we could like literally feel like we're in the same place, having coffee, you know, breaking yeah. bread and talking? Like, would this would be this be something that you would want to use not only to meet us, but maybe like your your future employer or maybe somebody that you can't just jump like in the car and meet like that afternoon? Right. Yeah. I mean, it gives it more of that real uh, personal feel. I think adding on that that three D level. I mean, we, we're all used to Zoom or Teams or Google or whatever, you know, however we're meeting online, but adding the 3D element and making it kind of like you're sitting across from someone like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that gives it a, a little bit more of a personal touch. I feel like they need to install this in a Starbucks. I mean, I just feel like, you know, you <laughs> that you could just make, I'll meet you at Starbucks. And it's like, this would be a good <laughs> Starbucks marketing thing. Maybe on Starbucks and then they would just, just have a line of these and then you dial up your, your yeah. buddy and another, yeah. 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 Things so there you go, Starbucks. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's interesting stuff. So there's a lot of it out there, and I'll try to you know share some more of that stuff. And if anybody does have questions, feel free to reach out. You know, let me know. Um, I feel like we've covered a lot of stuff in this episode. We did, and I'm so <laughs> glad because our technology. I've been talking a lot. <laughs> so sorry, everybody, but the, I get excited about this stuff. We appreciate it, and it was such good information. It was keeping us on top of all things. Um, tech and we need to know this greg a lot of things to look forward to and most importantly we should celebrate today that greg's tech is working flawlessly too did they say that too quickly but the of shows i feel like i can say that now yeah yeah i think i think we made it we made it so far but <laughs> amazing well thank you so much for our friends um i see vicky she's laughing about starbucks and 3d thank you so much for being here with us. We appreciate, of course, your support and your comments. Of course, don't forget to subscribe and make sure to turn on the alert button so you'll know each time that we go live. But of course, you know, after this, definitely send us some questions and comments if you see anything. I know Sadiq does yeah. an amazing job with this on Twitter. He's always sending Greg and I interesting things and tagging us on it. So we appreciate that so much. Yes. And then we'll be back right, right next week. Yeah, back next week. Perfect. Well, we'll look forward to seeing everybody. Thank you so much and have an amazing week. Bye, everybody.